Hey everyone, welcome to the pre-application webinar for Libraries Transforming Communities focus on small and rural libraries. In this session, we will be covering everything you need to be aware of in order to apply for one of the $3,000 grants for small and or rural libraries. Before we dig in, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Samantha Oakley, and I'm the director of the Libraries Transforming Communities Project and program manager of the American Library Association's Public Programs Office. Throughout this session, I'll be taking you through the grant guidelines, providing you with tips on how to write a competitive application, and showing you how to submit your proposal using our application system. I also just want to make a quick note that the first portion of this presentation is pre-recorded. Following the presentation, there will be time for a live Q&A to answer any questions that you may have. Libraries Transforming Communities focus on small and rural libraries and is an initiative that seeks to provide community engagement resources and opportunities specific to the needs of library workers serving small and rural communities. We are grateful to our partners at the Association for Small and Rural Communities, or ARSL, for their ongoing collaboration. As part of this initiative, ALA will provide over $603,000 grants to libraries serving small and or rural communities to develop and lead community efforts and provide library workers with facilitation skills via the Libraries Transforming Communities Facilitation Skills for Small and Rural Libraries eCourse and Facilitation Guide. We have already awarded 517 grants in the first two rounds, and this uh, application round will award an additional 100 grants. During this challenging, and especially during this time, Libraries are serving their patrons in new and important ways through community engagement. For those of you who may be less familiar with the term, community engagement is the process of working collaboratively with community members, be they library patrons, residents, faculty, students, or partner organizations, for the betterment of the community. As champions of lifelong learning, libraries are a place to stimulate curiosity, access technology, and explore new ideas, hobbies, and careers. Increasingly, libraries also offer patrons welcoming virtual and physical spaces to meet their neighbors to discuss and resolve important issues. In partnership with the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, this grant is designed to provide facilitation training and flexible funding to help support small and or rural libraries to implement a community engagement project and host a conversation with their community. So what do you need to know before applying for one of these $3,000 grants? First, you'll need to check that you are eligible for this opportunity. The good news is that this grant is open to all types of libraries, including public, academic, community college, K through 12, tribal libraries, and special libraries. However, the applicant library must serve a small and or rural community in the US or a US territory. Libraries that are considered both small and rural will be prioritized. So what is a small or rural community? Per the Institute of Museum and Library Services definition, a small community is one that has a population of 25,000 or less, and a rural community is one that is more than or equal to five miles from an urbanized area. The other eligibility requirement that you must meet in order to qualify for this grant is that you must have an institutional or personal membership to either the American Library Association or the Association for Rural and Small Libraries. If applying with a personal ARSL membership, it must belong to the project director. If applying with a personal ALA membership, it can belong to any member of your library staff. If you have a question about whether your library qualifies as small or rural, or about your membership status, please email us at publicprograms at ala.org, and we will work with you to determine if you qualify. Please note that previous LTC grant recipients, libraries that were awarded in round one or two, are eligible to apply again for this third round of for additional funding. Returning applicants will be asked in the application to describe their previous project and how they would use this opportunity to continue the community engagement efforts started in the previous round. 
We will discuss the different narrative questions for new and returning applicants during the application walkthrough. So your library is eligible. Let's talk about what to do once you've gone through the eligibility requirements and determine that you qualify to apply for one of these grants. What is, what is it exactly that your library will get? If selected for funding, you will receive $3,000 to support expenses related to a community engagement project. These funds can be spent on a wide variety of things to support your work. Eligible expenses are broad, anything from PPE to hotspots to staff time. You'll also receive professional development consisting of the LTC facilitation skills for small and rural libraries, asynchronous e-course and facilitation plus a suite of online resources developed to support community awareness of your library's efforts. These include template press releases, social media messaging, digital promotional materials, and template letters that can be used to notify local leaders and officials about the library's project. ALA project staff will also be available to help. Finally, you'll get technical and project support from the ALA Public Programs Office throughout your grant term, such as access to online learning opportunities for grantees intended to assist project directors in promoting their conversation, completing grant reporting requirements, and participating in evaluation. You also get access to a community of practice for project directors and staff. Now that you know what your library will receive, let's talk about what you are required to do. First, the person leading the grant project at your library will need to participate in the LTC facilitation skills for small and rural libraries asynchronous e-course. We estimate that this course will take approximately four hours to complete. The course walks you through everything you need to know about leading a community conversation from what to do when planning one, how to facilitate the discussion on the day of the event, and what should be done afterward to follow up with participants. Once the project director completes the e-course, you will need to host at least one community conversation with uh, members of your community. This can be anything from using the conversation cafe model to talk about your community about a topic of interest to hosting a one book, one community initiative to facilitate a dialogue on a broader issue. After the conversation, you will be required to share out what you heard or learned from the discussion. This can be done through writing an article about what was discussed in the conversation for the local paper, talking about what happened in the library's podcast, or posting highlights from the conversation to your library's Facebook page. From your community conversation, we want you to cover any topic that is relevant to your community. This could include anything from public health concerns, unemployment rates, e-learning, school closures, or even using a book or film as a way to launch a discussion about an issue your community is currently grappling with. We really want you to focus on facilitating a conversation on a subject that is important to your community, your library serves, in a way that works best for them. This can mean hosting an in-person conversation outside of the library that maintains social distancing best practices or leading a virtual conversation on Zoom. Following your conversation, you'll need to publicly report and share out information about the content or outcomes from it. You can do this by using PLA's Project Outcome Community Engagement or ACRL's Project Outcome Events and Programs areas to collect and share feedback about the conversation with library leadership and trustees, writing an article and submitting it to a local newspaper or other media outlet or posting it to a library's social media, creating a video and posting it to the library's YouTube, Facebook, or other social media account, writing and sending a letter or email to a state legislator or other elected official about the conversation, creating a library blog or podcast about the issues discussed during the conversation or about the process itself. With the wide range of ways you can choose to implement a community conversation, we want to make sure that the eligible expenses are flexible enough to meet the needs of a variety of projects. Due to this, the grant funds can be used on anything to support your community engagement project. This may include, but is not limited to, programming materials such as markers, post-its, paper, etc., staff time, books or ebooks, 
hotspots to lend out to your community, personal protective equipment, space rental, marketing materials, speaker fees, and so, so much more. The grant funds just may not be used to support indirect costs such as general library administrative expenses or donations to other organizations. Now that we've gone over all the requirements, let's dive into the actual proposal. For this, I'll be walking you through the various application components in our grants management platform. To access the application, click apply online on the grant opportunity information page. This will open the login page for the grants platform in a new window. If you have previously used the system to apply for a grant through ALA's public programs office, simply enter your email address and password and click login. Note that your login and information for the grant platform is not the same as your login information if you have an ALA membership. This is a separate platform. If you have not used the system, please create new account to set up a profile. However, if you believe that someone else at your organization may have already created an account to apply for a different grant opportunity, please click the link to verify with our grant administrator before setting up a new account. If you need to create an account, you will be asked to provide organization information, user information, and executive director information, with an option to select if the user is the executive director. Fill in the required fields and click the next button to navigate through these sections. Once you get to the final section, create a password and then click create account. You will receive an email verification to the email address provided. Once you receive this email, click I have received the email to continue. Once you have completed setting up your new account, you will be brought to this screen. However, if you are logging into a previously used account, you will instead be brought to the applicant dashboard. To access the list of open opportunities, click apply in the top left corner. On the apply screen, find the Libraries Transforming Communities Focus on Small and Rural Libraries grant on this list of open opportunities. From here, you can review the project guidelines or click apply to begin your application. You will now be in the application. In the instructions section, simply type LTC3 into the project name field. The next section is the project director information. Uh, please fill out the contact information for the project director and institution. Note that this information will not be pre-populated from your user profile. In this section, you will also be asked to provide your congressional district. If you do not know this information, you can click the link labeled United States House of Representatives, and the Find Your Representative website will be opened in a new window. You will also be asked how you heard about this opportunity. Please select all that apply. Section three is for library information. Use the drop down menus to select your library type, total population served, and community type. In this section, you will also be asked to provide information about your ALA or ARSL membership. As a reminder, personal or institutional ALA or ARSL membership is a requirement of this grant. If you have questions about your membership status or where to find your membership number, please contact publicprograms at ala.org. If you are not currently a member or would like to become one, see the FAQs section of the LTC Grant Opportunity website for links to join. Finally, you will be asked if your library was a recipient of a Round 1 or Round 2 LTC grant. If your library already received a $3,000 LTC grant in either Round 1 or Round 2, select Yes. If not, select No. Be sure to answer this question correctly as new and returning applicants will be asked different narrative questions. If you are unsure that you have not, if you aren't sure if you've received a grant previously, feel free to reach out to us and we can help you at publicprograms.ala.org. Section four is the proposal narrative section. This is the section where you are going to explain what you are proposing. Links are provided in the grant guidelines and the leading conversations in small and rural libraries facilitation guide. We strongly encourage you to read these before preparing your responses as they may help you make structure your plan. Note that each narrative response should be limited to 
3,500 characters or less, including spaces. So you may want to prepare your answers in Microsoft Word or other document and paste into the application whenever you're ready. We will go through the narrative questions for new applicants first and then the questions for returning applicants. If your library has not already received an LTC grant, you will be asked four narrative questions, community and library information, conversation topic, goals, and conversation planning. Community and inf library information. For this narrative question, describe your library and the community it serves, including demographics, dynamics and key issues, or challenges it faces. What should reviewers know about your library and community in order to understand your proposed community engagement project? For the conversation topic or issue question, describe the topic or issue that your community engagement project will focus on. Why is it important for your library or community to discuss this particular issue or topic? How did you arrive at this particular topic or subject? For example, did you talk with library patrons, reach out to other area organizations, dig into data about your community? How will your library and or community benefit from having these discussions? For the goals section, describe the library's goal or purpose of your project plan. What are you aiming to accomplish? For example, are you looking to enhance library resources based on community input? explore a topic and or build understanding of others experiences, generate ideas, explore options and make a decision or discuss an issue and collaboratively determine next steps. For the conversation planning section, uh, how do you envision your conversation taking place? For example, um, are you thinking of doing virtual book club discussions, socially distanced conversations outdoors at the library using the National Issues Forum model? Uh, really describe what you're planning your conversation to look like. Do you feel you are able to describe how you envision your conversation or conversations will take place? Or are you new to this and planning to learn these skills through the online course? What kind of marketing or art outreach do you plan to do for the conversation? How are you planning to share the content or outcomes of the conversation? For example, are you planning to write an article for the local newspaper, create a video about what was discussed for the library's social media, etc.? For returning applicants or those who have already received a $3,000 LTC grant, we will be asking a different set of questions. They will also be asked to provide community and library information, such as describing your library and the community it serves, including demographics, dynamics, and key issues or challenges it faces, et cetera. However, the remaining questions will differ. For the conversation description, applicants are asked to describe the conversation or conversations facilitated as part of their first LTC grant. Why was it important for your community to discuss this topic or issue? What was the library's goal or purpose for the conversations? How did you meet or not meet these goals? What has the response or outcome of the discussions been? And in the continued work plan, applicants will describe how they plan to continue the community engagement effort begun with their first LTC grant. What topic or issue will your continued effort be focused on? How do you envision your conversations taking place? How will the discussions build upon or expand on the work of your first grant? How will your library and or community benefit from the continued work? All applicants will be asked to provide a budget. Describe in this section, you'll want to describe your plans for spending the $3,000 in grant funds. What will you use the funding to purchase or support? Please be specific. For example, $1,000 will be spent on staff time to support the development and implementation of the project. $200 will be used to purchase a Zoom business license in order to uh, hold the conversation virtually, et cetera. The total amount of your proposed budget plan should add up to $3,000. Please be sure to refer back to the eligible expenses listed on the website to ensure that your proposed spending will be approved. In section six, you can upload any letters of support from your community or additional materials that you may help provide more information about your proposal. These can include sample promotional materials or draft discussion questions. 
Please note that these are optional. However, they may help to make your application more competitive. In the final section, you will need to provide contact information from a certifying official. This should be anyone with your library who is able to submit applications for funding on behalf of the institution. This may vary depending on the institution, but is typically the project director, or sorry, library director. It can be the same person listed as the project director and or the person submitting the proposal as long as they are able to submit applications for funding on behalf of their institution. You will be asked to certify that your organization is neither presently debarred, suspended, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, nor voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency. To check the status of your institution, click System for Awards Management. This will open the SAM.gov website in a new website in a new window where you can search for your institution and verify that your organization is not listed as an ineligible. Once you have completed all information, you can submit your application. Once you submit, you can no longer edit your application. If you are not ready to submit yet, you can save your application and you will be able to access your draft when you log back into your account using the edit application link. So in closing, the top tips that I can offer as you work on your application are to be sure to read the grant guidelines carefully. They contain pertinent information about the opportunity that is critical to include to ensure the competitiveness of your application. Second, be sure to thoroughly answer all the questions in the application. Provide as much detail as you can for each narrative response as it will help reviewers understand your library and your proposed project. Say to yourself, what should reviewers know about your library and community in order to understand your community engagement project? Third, whatever possible, provide numbers and examples to justify what you are saying in the narrative. For example, if you are describing the poverty level of your community, perhaps pull some census data to help support what you are saying. Fourth, find community partners willing to work with you on your project. While not required, a partner can go a long way to helping you reach different members of your community. Fifth, while optional, we would recommend collecting letters of support from community stakeholders. Uh, this helps to show peer reviewers the amount of buy-in and interest your community has in the project. And finally, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to the ALA Public Programs Office at publicprograms.ala.org. With that, I want to thank you all for listening to this presentation. We will now switch over to the live Q&A to answer any questions you may have. Great. Um, so as mentioned, uh, we'll switch over to the live Q&A now. I'm going to invite my colleagues to also um, pop on the screen and help me answer any that might come up. Um, I'm also going to really quick switch over to the slideshow and forward through a bunch of these slides to get to the last one uh, with the deadline dates. There we go. Elena, did we have any questions come through while the presentation was going? We don't have any questions yet, so if you do have anything, um, please feel free to add that either to the chat box or to the Q&A feature. While we're waiting for questions to pop up, I'm going to add some more links to the chat box. Um, one of the other opportunities that we offer with this grant is the ability to sign up for a consultation call with ALA staff. So I'm going to add that link into the chat as well. Those are 20 minute phone calls where we can discuss with you this opportunity and your proposal. Um, so I'm going to add that there. And we do have a question that just came through. Um, is there a word document of the question so we can compose our narratives in word first? I can speak to that or if you. Um, on the website, there is a PDF of the um, 
application. So you can use that or you can use the questions from the guidelines themselves to sort of prepare your answers in Word first. Um, and then you can copy and paste them into the system. It uh, looks like we have a question in the Q&A. How much of the proposal should we have prepared before attending a consultation? Um, so you can come with nothing prepared uh, written in the proposal if you just want to run a few ideas by us to see if they would fit with the grant opportunity. That is fine. Um, if you have a proposal started that you want us to look at and come to the consultation to provide feedback on, we can also do that. So it's it's really whatever works for you and whatever stage of your proposal you're at at the moment. I'll also um, mention that we are willing to look at draft proposals. Um, we would need those a week before the deadline, which I believe would be September 9th we would need them by. Um, and that would just be to give us time to read over your proposal, provide feedback, and then have sent it back to you so that you have time to also uh, look through those edits and incorporate any. And I just added the link to the PDF of the application into the chat box as well. And one thing I just wanted to note with that is because the PDF just has all of the questions, that means the narrative questions for both the new and the returning applicants will be listed there. So if you are preparing your answers outside of the system, just be sure that you're answering the correct narrative questions based on whether or not you've already received an LTC grant in either round one or round two. And if you don't have um, questions, we're here for another half an hour. And if you have ideas about what you would like to do um, kind of percolating, feel free to drop those in the chat as well if you want to see what others are thinking and also get our initial thoughts on what you might be considering. It looks like um, we have someone who raised their hand. So Nancy, I'm gonna allow you to speak if you have a question that you wanted to ask. It looks like uh, Rosemary is asking how many people are attending today. Um, so we have 50 people in the room, um, but we had over 100 signed up. So a lot of people will um, sign up in order to get a copy of the uh, recording. Um, if you're asking in order to kind of gauge how many people might be applying for this, I can tell you that in round one, we received, I believe, 300 applications for how many did we offer in round one? Was it 150? 200. 200. 200. Thank you for 200 uh, awards. And we did have another question come through in the Q&A. Uh, Julie is wondering if it's weighted with regards to having had a previous award one way or another. Um, it's not necessarily weighted one or the other. It really just depends on the proposal and how many applications we get. Um, so we're aiming to award repeats um, up to 50% of the awards to um, 20 to 50% of the awards will be repeats. Kate asked a question. Um, she 
mentioned not wanting to duplicate existing efforts in their community. Um, like food insecurity is a big thing, but if other organizations are working on this, should they leave it alone? Um, so just seeming to want some input on how to determine a topic for their community. Yeah, if there are other organizations in your community that are working on food insecurity, I would suggest reaching out to them and seeing if um, they'd be interested in partnering with you on this and having a discussion. Um, also, they might already know some gaps within the community um, around the topic that might be useful to have a conversation about that the library could pick up. Um, so I'd really suggest working with those community organizations that you've identified. And on that topic, um, Nancy was wondering um, if we could briefly talk about a past recipient who was successful and what did success look like? Yeah, so on the LTC uh, website, we have several example applications of successful uh, prior recipients of the award. Um, so if you look at those applications, you'll notice that the sites um, were really used, were descriptive of their community and really kept the focus on their topic. So um, the one application that I'm thinking of is a small uh, town up in Alaska. They really wanted to focus on housing insecurity in their um, area and they described in their community section they really talked about how that look what their community looks like in regards to housing um, as well as the library and then they went into why it is important for them to lead this conversation and um, described what they would like that conversation to look like um, i believe they use conversation cafe model i might be wrong i haven't looked at that application in a few months um, but they you could tell that they used the facilitation guide and uh, looked at that in order to structure their applicate their proposal. So I would really suggest just briefly looking through that and um, using that as kind of a reference for writing your proposal. Elena and Sarah, do you have any uh, successful applications that you would like to note? I'm going to drop a couple of links in the chat. Um, we've written a few articles for our website, Programming Librarian, about um, libraries who participated in rounds one and two. And that will give you um, a sort of a few standout examples. There are also example proposals included in the project guidelines. So I'll uh, drop that link in the chat as well. Thanks. Deborah um, is wondering if it's too late to do the grant application justice. So um, because the application cycle has already begun, I'm guessing, um, I would say no, the application is designed to be um, a pretty quick application to complete. Um, it, the most time consuming part is usually just coming up with your topic and sort of deciding what you want to focus on. But the narrative questions themselves are, you know, pretty straightforward to answer. And um, as mentioned in the uh, recording we just watched, there are no requirements in terms of adding letters of support. Um, they are encouraged if, if you have access to um, people or organizations that would write letters of support for you, but there are no additional sort of attachments that are required as part of the application. So um, you should definitely have enough time at this point in the application cycle to apply, I would say. Sam, I don't know if you have anything you wanna to add to that. Um, I would just add, as you were saying, it's, it's designed in a way to not be a heavy lift. Um, we really try to keep the uh, questions um, limited and in order to make this doable, especially as everyone's time is even more strapped than usual with the pandemic. Um, so yeah, I would, I definitely don't think it's too late to start an application. I'd really encourage you to um, draft one up. And as mentioned, we are willing to provide feedback on applications. So if you're worried about that, we're more than happy to also 
provide feedback on what areas that you could improve upon and where your application we think is strong. There are a few questions um, regarding the ratio of applications to awards. Um, so in the previous two cycles, we had um, around 650 applications to um, just over 500 awards given out. Um, and so that can give you somewhat of a sense of what the ratio is, but this is a bit of a different cycle since um, returning applicants can also apply. Um, so might not necessarily be you know indicative of what we'll expect to see in this current round uh, sam i don't know if you have any other thoughts to add to that no um it's just it's difficult uh as you were saying to uh estimate um in the second round we had uh more awards to give out than um we received applications for um, in the first round, it was the opposite. We had uh, more applications than we had awards to give out. Um, so it really, it really varies. Um, so we can't necessarily give you a good ratio. And then as the second part to that question, there will be 100 awards available for round three. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, so they are saying this is not a difficult grant application to complete. Um, the hardest part is really to get your ideas fleshed out to determine exactly what you need. Um, so thank you. Nancy um, said that their topic is focused on what the community wants in children's programming. Is that too specific? No, um, that's not too specific at all, especially because there's a wide variety of children's programming that you could offer. Um, so you could even make it uh, more stream it down more to what type of after school children's programming does the community need or is interested in or yeah so that topic is definitely not too um, narrow. Also, because it's a question that um, I think we all get a lot in the consultation calls, uh, with the budget, you don't have to, those aren't set in stone. So if your conversation, part of it, you're hoping to learn what your community needs and use some of the money to um, support adding, as Nancy is uh, talking about children's programming, uh, additional children's programming um, based on what the conversation you hear from that, um, you can have that a bucket in the budget that's dedicated towards um, children's programming just in general um, based and just make a note that this will be based on the outcomes of the conversation. Um, you are also able to edit your budget um, if awarded, um, if it's less than 10% change of the overall budget, you won't need to request permission to make modifications. However, if it's over that, we do just ask that you uh, submit to us a budget notification request. We have a question. Um, someone's interested in offering health and fitness discussions and activities and is wondering how specific they need to be. So it really depends. Um, so are you looking to just talk with your community about health and fitness and what they're interested in? Um, that can be as specific as it is, as long as you can justify why that conversation is important to your uh, community. And then um, from there, you can 
say that in the conversation, um, you think that certain themes will become apparent and you'll have a firmer direction on where to go based on that. So we have about 20 minutes left and we will hang out here in case anyone else has any questions or would like additional feedback on their initial thoughts. So Kate is asking with regards to the budget, if I have not read, if I have not had the conversation yet and can't know the outcome, how do I, how do I write the budget to address the issue of concern in my community? So the budget can be used for staff time. It can be used for um, materials to support your conversation. Um, so if you need a Zoom license, um, so there's some logistical things that you can budget into there. Uh, and then for your conversation, if you want to create programs based on the conversation that you have, just add a very brief kind of fluffy portion of the budget that says, um, based on the conversation outcomes, we are anticipating we will spend, I don't know, $1,000 on um, children's materials, like for example, books, um, a video streaming subscription, um, anything else that would come out with a children's programming. Um, so that can be really a loose bucket. But I understand where you're coming from. It's difficult to anticipate what you will need to spend uh, the funds on without having the conversation first. And then Elena, in your um, consultation calls that we've been having, have you had any common questions come up that you just want to touch base on? One thing I always try to emphasize is um, the grant really is focused on a community conversation. So um, as you're developing your project plans and you know thinking about your overall project goals, make sure that the conversation's really at the heart of that and in terms of the conversation, what we're really looking for is, you know, like a group discussion where members of your community are able to participate in the conversation. I know sometimes people ask about, you know, is it okay if I do this pres like educational presentation? Um, so, and, you know, an educational presentation on its own wouldn't be considered as a conversation for this grant. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to think about that conversation element. Great, thanks. Sarah, do you have any tips or advice? Just to reiterate, to answer all the questions in the grant proposal, which seems so obvious, but um, it, it tends to ding people with every, um, every grant, unfortunately. So just be thorough in your answers and ask questions if you uh, have any questions at all. Um, we really want to make this um, as I said in the chat, uh, accessible to the most possible um, number of libraries, even if you're a solo librarian in a tiny community who's never written a grant before. So we are here to help. And I just wanted to um, note Rosemary's question. Uh, 
about whether more than one person associated with the project can take advantage of the facilitation training. Sarah answered that in the chat, but just want to say out loud to everyone on the call, yes, the e-course is free and available to anyone who's interested in taking it. So we definitely encourage you to take it. Um, in terms of the requirements, you don't need to take it until um, after you've been selected, but before you host your conversation. Um, however, if you want to take it now to help you sort of think through your ideas and develop your proposal, you are more than encouraged to do so. I'm also going to drop a link to our facilitation guide into the chat box. Um, this is a companion piece to the online course. And it may give you um, just a snapshot of what you'll be learning in the online course that will be easy for you to just quickly scan if you are thinking about applying or looking for ideas. And that is also free and available to anyone and you are um, welcome and encouraged to share that guide far and wide. Okay, so it seems like we dried up all the questions and everyone has shared their initial ideas that they wanted feedback on. Um, so we'll go ahead and end the session a little early. Um, thank you all for joining us today. If you do have any questions that come to mind um, after you've had time to consider the webinar today, feel free to email us at publicprograms at ala.org or to give us a call on the phone at the phone number on the screen. Um, we're happy to help you out in whatever way we can. Um, in the meantime, Phil, I just wanna thank you all for joining us today, as well as thank my uh, colleagues, Elena and Sarah for their help on this session. Thank you. Thanks everyone.